A couple of days ago, I went online to book a doctor's appointment for an unrelated medical concern. Nothing to do with coronavirus or respiratory illness of any kind. Unsurprisingly, the first thing I was met with was this long-winded coronavirus alert, asking me to ring reception if I have any flu-like symptoms, like cough, runny nose. All the usual, have you travelled overseas recently, or come in contact with somebody who has, or come in contact with somebody who has coronavirus, or is suspected of having coronavirus, blah blah blah. Anyway, I went to book my appointment, selected the time, and then was met with this warning message. Coronavirus alert! Please answer these questions truthfully. We need this to reduce the risk to others and to provide you with the safest treatment. I will answer truthfully. I've always taken issue with this line of questioning. The Australian government are exceptionally good at doing the same thing too. On their tourist visa application form, they ask questions like, have you been involved in people smuggling or people trafficking offences? Have you been associated with a person, group, or organisation that is involved in criminal conduct? Have you been charged with or indicted for genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, torture, slavery, or any other crime that is otherwise of a serious international concern? Obviously, if I'm a hardened criminal willing to commit torture and genocide with a side hustle in the slave trade, I doubt that I'd care too much about lying on an Australian government visa form. Obviously, these questions are designed for honest people and not criminals. Therefore, making this line of questioning essentially useless. If I was a person with coronavirus willing to lie my way into a doctor's office, is this pop-up really going to stop me? Of course not. I will answer truthfully. Click. Do you have any of the following symptoms? No, of course not. Have you travelled or returned from overseas? It sounds like we're repeating ourselves here. No. Have you been in direct contact with someone with suspected coronavirus? No. Finally, I get to where I can actually book the appointment. But is that the end of it? Not by a long shot. The next morning, the day of the appointment, I was sent a text message. By law, you need to inform us if you have flu symptoms. Please call name of medical centre and their phone number from car when you arrive for social distancing. Reply yes to confirm or call to cancel. At that time of the day, I was busy getting my children ready for school. I make a point of not replying to these silly kinds of messages because I only booked the bloody appointment the previous night. Of course I'll be attending. If I couldn't make it, I'd give them a call. But obviously, the fact that they send out these sorts of messages probably means that a certain segment of society just don't show up to their appointments and don't bother letting the doctor know. But should the rest of us be punished for their bad behaviour? A simple reminder message would suffice. Anyway, about half an hour later, I was walking my children to school and got a phone call from, guess who? The medical centre. I could barely hear the lady as I was walking beside traffic. She was asking all the usual rubbish, essentially the same questions that I had already answered before online. Have you been overseas? Blah blah blah. Have you come in contact with somebody with coronavirus? Blah blah blah. The phone call went on for a good couple of minutes. Finally, at the end of the phone call, she requested that I give the medical centre a call when I arrive in their car park and to wait outside their doors. I was getting a bit sick of all of this and said that I wasn't going to do that. I've been to the medical centre a number of times before. They've got these big glass doors where you can see right inside, and you can see the receptionist sitting on the other side right in front of you. What's the point of the phone call? Anyway, I asked her if I could just knock on the glass doors when I arrive. She said, uh, OK, I suppose that's OK. Finally, I dropped my kids off at school and arrived at the medical centre. I was expecting the doors to be locked, but as I approached to knock on the doors, the doors automatically opened, as automatic doors tend to do. It ended up being quite a silly situation. Here I am standing in the open doorway, looking at the receptionist, who's only sitting about two metres away from me, looking straight back. I asked, is it OK if I come in? She replied, excuse me, who are you? I gave her my name and she ushered me in. There was nobody else in the waiting room, which was devoid of magazines or anything else that could provide me with any form of entertainment. She then requested that I answer a series of questions regarding the coronavirus. Yes, the same questions that I've already answered three times before. I was getting a bit sick of it all, so I just told her that I wasn't going to answer those questions again. I've already done all this, she replied. So you haven't been in contact with somebody with coronavirus? No, I haven't. 
I know it's not her fault, she's only doing her job. But the worst thing is, during the actual height of the pandemic, I was getting asked a lot less questions than I am now. The only question that I was routinely asked back then was, have you been to China in the last 14 days? Now that we pretty much have almost no cases of coronavirus in Australia, especially in Queensland, we're treated almost like rabies-infected monkeys. Unless, of course, you're a protester, then you can go out and break all the social distancing rules you like, and not get fined. And just one more quick story about this coronavirus overreaction. My children's school, a public school, is currently enforcing social distancing measures, at least between the parents. When I arrive in the morning, I'm not allowed to enter the school grounds, where previously I had to enter to walk my five-year-old daughter down to her classroom. Their parents were encouraged to help their children with their morning activity and reading. I used to do that every day. It was a great way to settle your child in for the day. But not anymore. Now I have to hand off my daughter to one of the Grade 6 girls, who then walks her down to the classroom. All the time, we're under the watchful gaze of the school principal, who is standing out the front of the school. In the afternoons, parents of prep students must arrive five minutes early and stand waiting in the staff car park, socially distanced, of course. When our children arrive, we have to wait for them to cross the car park to meet us, and then we all have to funnel out a single gate. I dared to go out a different gate and got in trouble. Yes, a 40-year-old man got in trouble by the school principal. It's funny how 800 kids can play inside the school grounds, running around, hugging each other, and all the rest of it. But when a grown adult dares to try to use the wrong gate, treachery! How dare I break social distancing rules in a city that doesn't even have coronavirus? Actually, thinking about it, I would probably have more freedom if I was a rabies-infected monkey locked up in a zoo. Ooh, ooh, ooh.